God. I feel like I'm loading myself like a rhino here. I mean, in general, I have free time, but I've had some stuff going on lately. Yeah, I've been busy. But things have been going good so far, too, definitely. And, um, especially this month, because, um, my 18th birthday was on the 10th. So I was really excited about that. Yeah, um, I ended up getting a bunch of new books, too, including The Invention of Hugo Cabri, which I read in a day. And some new software, Adobe Elements, which I am so excited to be working with. Because it's, it's quite similar to the stuff that we use in video production class. So I knew most of it, but I had to figure some other stuff out and experiment with some stuff. In fact, there's a lot of clip art and animations and effects and stuff that I can use. So I'm trying to figure out how I can use some of those in my films. They're really cool. There's stuff like fire, smoke, a big spinning dust cloud. And at one point, actually one of the effects, which is one of my favorites, is like a circle of birds flying around. I don't know what kind they are, but um, depending on what sort of shot I put them in, you can sort of get an impression that they're either really big or really small. Because there's actually one shot... Um, Normally, I wouldn't be giving this stuff out because it's supposed to be kind of secret. I'm not giving away too much, just this. But one of the shots for Dare Strix Arcanus, um, the guy, my buddy Colin, who plays Modigus, a bronze dragon, in this film, um, one shot was just of his hand, and I added the effect with the birds so that when his hand is out like this, it just looks like there are these tiny little birds flying around his hand. So, Because I, I looked at that effect and I'm thinking, hey, maybe I can put this in the film and maybe add it to the books. Because that's really cool. Because what I figured I could put in the book series is these little messenger birds. Not like the owls from Harry Potter, no, not by a long shot, so I'm not plagiarizing anything. But they're like these tiny birds that are like this big. And the only way for them to properly give a message is to have them perch on like this part of your ear and stick their head in there so that only you can hear it in case it's top secret or something. And then whoever hears the message can pass it along if they want to or just tell the bird to tell it to someone else just in case. And I think like um, a signal or something that they have a message, if there's more than one of them, they'll just like fly in a circle next to you so that way you know that they have a message. If they're not doing that, then you don't have to pay too much attention to them. I haven't figured out a ton yet, but I think I'm going to put them in the prequel as, like, the... I'm not entirely sure when yet, but I think they're going to come up soon in this book. But, um, don't be getting impatient yet because I've been working on these books for, like, a year and a half, and I still need to finish the third and the fourth. Yeah, that's the way it's going to be. There's going to be four books. The Apprentice, The Castle, The Prequel, Black Vix and then book four, The Cataclysm. The prequel was originally going to be the fourth one, but then I figured maybe I could put it as the first book, but um, the main character in this third book comes up in the second one. And right after you read that, in fact, after I was writing it, I kind of wanted this character to be in the center, in, like, centerfold at some point, so I figured I could make a prequel about him because he's kind of, he's got, like, a big backstory that I had thought of but wanted to add more to. So I made that prequel about him that leads up to the beginning of the first book, pretty much. And so, in the fourth one, I think is supposed to be, like, I mean, the title kind of explains part of it, the cataclysm, but it's supposed to be something like a, like a cataclysmic threat or something. Like, obviously the world's not going to end because that would just be too anticlimactic and, pfft, as you might say. <laughs> but yeah, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. I'm sort of just playing it by ear. Oh yeah, in other news, um, The Hunger Games just came out last week, and I saw it twice. I don't know how many of you went to the midnight premiere. I know a bunch of my friends went to see it at midnight, so I congratulate them for that, along with the other diehard Hunger Games fans. <laughs> um, 
I saw it twice at the nearest theater, and there's, um, I don't know how many car mics have this sort of thing in it, but the one I went to has this, um, a big D theater. It's one of the auditoriums in there, and it's like at least one and a half times the size of one of the other auditoriums. It's the kind that goes up really high, has all the stadium seats, and it's sort of lit green. The seats are all leather, and um, it has a big, big D symbol on them, and uh, there are huge surround sound speakers, and I mean huge. Um, when I went to see it, I didn't dare go up to the top because the speakers there were like this wide, at least, and about this tall. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can't see my hands on either end of the frame, but I'm pretty sure you can tell they're at full extent. But that's probably about the size of the speakers, so yeah. If I sat near the top, I would probably go deaf halfway through the movie. That was just my guess, though. I sat near the middle, but... <laughs> but yeah, The Hunger Games was great. It was like just like the book. And, um... It was... Amazing. And I can't wait to see it again. I think when my sister comes home from college, we're going to see it together, so I can't wait for that. <laughs> and uh, when, I don't know how many did this, but um, the second time I saw The Hunger Games was literally the next day. <laughs> right after that, because I saw it the first time the day it came out, and then the next day with my cousin, because he read the books too, and he really wanted to see it, so... And we had actually planned ahead of time on going together anyways, kind of like how we plan on seeing The Hobbit together when it comes out, because we love Lord of the Rings. And um, that, was, that was really good. That was really fun. In fact, both times I saw The Hunger Games, there was a huge line. I mean, not, not before the movie. Didn't have any trouble getting in because we went to like a 4 o'clock show. But right after the movie was over, um, both times I went to see the movie. We walk out of the door of the auditorium, right? And then there's a huge line, and it goes from the door, down the hall, across the lobby, and then out that door, down the parking lot. I mean, down the sidewalk to the parking lot. So, yeah, it was big. Huge. <laughs> when I went to see it um, with Caius, um, we ended up meeting up with some of his friends. So that was pretty interesting, and after we got out, um, I told him, brace yourself for a line. And so we ended up taking a rear exit, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we were reduced to. We were reduced to taking the back exit, because we didn't want to go through that huge crowd. And I ended up going home extremely thirsty, because the drinking fountains were blocked by all the people. Yeah. Even I wouldn't reduce myself to crawling between people's legs just to get a drink. Yeah, good times, good times. Definitely the sort of times I can tell people a few decades from now. Ah, boy. Anyway, um, as some of you might know, I have put up a ton of music videos on my channel. Of Neverland, The Hobbit, Star Wars. Yeah, I feel like I'm part of the club now. Because I've seen so many fan-made videos with... Um, songs and a bunch of, like, okay, not exactly songs, but, um, a bunch of music videos with popular songs with, attached with clips from stuff like Harry Potter, Avatar, and, um, so now, yeah, I just feel like I'm one of them now. <laughs> it's great. It feels really good. And, um, I'm glad I'm able to get access to some of this footage and edit them like this. And the good thing is I don't need to take credit for any of it because I'm just doing this for fun and I want to just make one of these videos because I'm constantly looking around for videos like this and now is my chance to make some of them. So that, I think, is amazing. I just, I just love that. I don't know if any of my... I don't know how many of you have seen it, but on my newest upload um, is a music video with clips from historical inaccuracy. <laughs> I picked the music from uh, the end credits of Tom and Huck. 
I don't know how many of you have seen that movie. It's from 1997. It stars Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Brad Renfro. It's the... It's another movie adaptation to Tom Sawyer. You should look it up. It's really good. And so is the music. And I just love that music. So I just felt like I should just make a video with it. So I did. The way I put it in the video, it really just shows how... I guess you could say just silly me and Dylan were the whole time making that movie. So yeah, um, so yeah, you should check that out, and um, so, and trust me, as soon as I figure out when is like the right time to, I will definitely put Dare Strix Arcanus up on my channel, along with Oscar's next video. Yeah, he's got a good one coming up. It's, um, actually, you know, I'm not gonna say anything, because I want him to tell you that in the video. Believe me, he will. <laughs> With extreme emphasis. Yeah. Definitely a lot of emphasis, and he will definitely, um... I don't know how I should put it, keep you on your toes. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of like a... He's kind of like a special guest on my YouTube channel. In fact, I'm... Depending on how... How much people like him or something, or how many ideas you can come up with, I'll definitely post more videos of him. Oh yeah, um, how many of you, um, are fans of Avatar The Last Airbender? Because I'm pretty sure a ton of you have heard about the new Avatar show coming out called The Legend of Korra, and a bunch of you still are looking for the release date, like I have been for the last year. And... I was watching the Kids' Choice Awards tonight on Nickelodeon. Yeah, I love that. They do it every year. I just love it. And, um, now the release date has been released, pretty much. It's, um, Legend of Korra premieres, um, on April 14th at 11. So, who are, however many of you are late sleepers like me, you'll need to set your alarm clocks or something so you don't miss it. I mean, I found the episode leaked somewhere on Google. I don't know how much publicity that got, but I was only able to watch some of it because it kept freezing. But yeah, it looks awesome so far. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see the rest of the episodes. I'm just so excited. I'm just almost too excited, actually. <laughs> and I can't wait. Just as much as I can't wait till the next time I get to see Hunger Games. And as much as I can't wait for the film festival at school this year. I'm going to try to enter Rangers of the Wild, the newest Oscar the Pig video, and Dara Strix Arcanist, but I can't guarantee they're going to get in. So, um, so that's why I'm not showing them, I mean, the two new videos. I mean, you've seen Rangers of the Wild, I'm pretty sure, if you have subscribed to my channel or looked around at it very much. But, um... There's actually a, I guess you could say a different version of it that I'm going to enter, but um, the other two videos I don't want to show you yet, because I don't know if they're going to get in or not, but I mean, I'll put them up whether they get in or not, but I want to find out first. If they don't, I'll put them up, like, as soon as I find out, but if they do make it, I'm going to wait until after the film festival, because otherwise it'll be kind of like, um, like putting a movie, like, releasing a movie on DVD or something before it comes out in theaters. You know? Just something like that. So I want to wait until the film festival. Yeah, still. I don't know whether they'll get in or not. Don't get your hopes up. Especially because I'm not showing them to you yet because I don't want to get your hopes up. I mean, I don't know what your standards are. If you've seen a film festival, even if it's a school one, I don't know if that's just a thing we do at this school or not. But... Yeah, I'm just going to wait, and don't worry, I'm pretty sure you'll like them either way. Alright, um, it's pretty late at night, and I should probably get some sleep. But, I will definitely, um, keep posting, and, um, alright, that's pretty much all I got to say for now.